Hello, everybody, and welcome to Cisco Speaks Halloween Edition. Today we have a special guest, Mr. Dan Johnson. Hey, thanks for thanks for having me, Cisco. It's a it's a real pleasure to be on the show. I've heard lots of good reviews about it, and you know, being able to be here for the Halloween season, the spooky season. You know, it's it's really fun being able to be here. So thanks for having me. Of course, of course. So let's move on to our first topic for today. All right, Halloween cool. costumes. Do you feel like they're right. overrated? Um, I feel like there are some Halloween costumes that are overrated, you know? Like, uh, the classic, like, elementary school ninja sword dude, and, like, the headless horseman or the horseless headsman. Like, all of those costumes are overrated. They get done way too much. It's like, just move on. Find something original. It's just that, you know, it feels like Halloween costumes, like, it's something fun for kids. And I mean, like, no hate to kids, you know? They don't really know any better. And if they think the same ninja costume year after year is fun for them then they can have it but i don't know that's just that's my two cents on that thank you mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. wait let's talk about our second talking point all right all right so you know halloween you know it has this fun with like trick-or-treating and costumes mm -hmm. but you know we're all in it for the candy really so Facts. what's your favorite kind of candy my favorite type of candy wow um, all right, I don't want to get too controversial on your podcast. Oh However, I do think my favorite overall candy would probably be Dum Dum Lollipops. Dum Dum Lollipops. For most people, I know, it's like, wow, that's a shot out of left field, you know? Like, most people don't expect it. But then, like, when you really stop to think about it, like, one... You can eat them really fast if you need to. So if you need to go on a candy grind, you can do that. Or if you want to savor them, you can just lick on them, you know, like it's a lollipop, and you can have them for a while. Right. They have tons of different flavors. Like the blueberry ones, amazing. The pink bubble gum, that's fantastic. The, like, root beer flavored ones, those ones are great. Like they just have so many different flavors, and they're just like, it's just something fun that you can have. And then when you're done, you have like, a little stick and like i know when i was younger you know like after i finished chewing off all like the little hard candy part i'd be like <sighs> i'll pretend like i was a smoker with a lollipop you know and it was just fun stuff like that like it just gave me like i thought i was cool i was like yeah you know like so that's that's my that's my two cents i think dumb dumb lollipops are my favorite halloween candy interesting now you know halloween and go having children go out to go get candy do you think there's yeah. any dangers of, like, having any malicious uh, items inside the candy? Oh, well, yeah, there's definitely a danger in it. Like, that whole thing, I think it was last year or maybe two years ago, with, like, razor blades and snicker bars and stuff like that. And that's just, like, come on, y'all, what the heck? Like, really, just, like, calm down. You don't need to do that. Like, just let kids have fun and do this. Like, it's just something that's, like... It's, 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 it's honestly, it's disgusting. Like, why do people find enjoyment in, like, shoving a razor blade that could seriously harm a child inside candy? Like, you put your faith in these people doing this. And they just, yeah. like, it's, it's, it's so stupid. So, before we go into our third talking point, let's, let's cut for commercial here. And let's talk about, uh, you know, the kids over at Research Art. Oh, yeah, the kids in the research art, yeah. yeah. The kids yeah, in research art are currently working on a ROM hack for their game. Which I know, I heard about it. Fire Emblem. Yeah, yeah, that's a pretty cool franchise. Like, yeah, no, they I've have a whole team it. devoted to, like, you know, uh, writing, storytelling, mm -hmm. uh, the actual, like, scripting, like, code-wise. Uh, and then they they're making like original new soundtrack. It. Yeah, they have yeah, their own custom new characters. New characters, so they have people doing art for it, like... This is like a serious thing that they're doing. That's like, wow. We've been talking about trick or treating, but mm -hmm. this year Favorite is quite candy. special. Yes, this year is quite special because you know we're in the middle of a global pandemic. I know, so, Chloe. We have to sit six feet apart at this table. That is true. We can't be right next to each other. Do you think people should go trick or treating at this point in the pandemic? You know, I think that there there are a couple ways you could look at the situation. I know that if you live in a small community, if it's a small town, and everyone quarantines beforehand, and, like, 
everything's pre-wrapped and stuff like that. So, like, yeah, if, if it's for little kids, follows proper precautions. Then I think it might be okay. Right. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I think one thing, and, like, this just came into my mind. If you have, like, really, really little kids and you're worried about them going out into the neighborhood, just do trick-or-treating inside your house. Like, have, like... Your mom wait in the kitchen, and your dad wait in his office, and the yeah. kids walk to each room throughout the house and go trick or treat inside the house. That's and a great idea. And you give them candy there, so you can you know do a smaller scale something like that, and they'll still get that fun experience, even though they might not be walking around. And you know, I mean, just try something like that. Like you can just come up with different ways to you know still get that same vibe for your kids if they really care about it. Right. No, it's a good idea. Do you want to reflect on some fun Halloween stories you've had in the past? Oh, fun Halloween stories. Oh, let's see. I have a couple good ones. Um, I'll say... Alright, I'll go over the favorite costumes I've been uh, throughout my life. Um, the first costume I ever remember being... I was Obi-Wan Kenobi and my older brother was Anakin Skywalker. And we were two Jedi, and we'd go around the neighborhood. But just in general, I, I haven't really gone to, like, Halloween parties or anything like that. Not because I don't get invited, because I'm not cool. I totally get invited. Um, yeah, no, it's just... I, I've always thought of Halloween as an interesting holiday. And I've kind of just, you know, casually spent it giving out candy to kids to come to the door. Because that's something that I find more enjoyable. Sitting at home... And watching, like, this young generation of kids just with boundless excitement for getting this most minuscule amount of candy possible, knowing that they're going to have a crazy sugar rush when they get home, and just doing something like that, you know? All right, well, this yeah. was this is a great podcast. Well, thanks for having me on. Thanks for coming on, Dan, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I don't know.